Hello everybody, can you imagine cruising the seas noiselessly with the sun as your fuel on the horizon as your limit? Well, this company is making that possible with their solar-powered electric propulsion yachts, offering an eco-friendly, low-maintenance and unlimited range sailing experience. Let me introduce Silent Yachts. Hi everyone, thank you very much for, uh, for joining us today. Welcome to another episode of Builder Nation. Today we are joined by Michael Kohler, CEO and founder at Silent Yachts. Michael, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us today. Can you please introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah, thank you for the introduction already. My name is Michael. Um, yeah, I, as you said, I set up this company a couple of years ago, in, actually in the year uh, 2009. Um, we, we started the construction of our very first yacht, uh, which was a 46-foot uh, catamaran, fully solar-powered, uh, powered by or propelled by electric motors. Uh, with all amenities on board, aircon, uh, deep freezer, fridge, uh, whatever you can imagine, full electric galley, of course, and and it worked. It worked. I mean, it definitely worked. I can see. I, mean, I actually knew your jets from way before uh, setting up this interview because, uh, I mean, I saw them around on the internet and stuff. They seem amazing. They, they seem incredible. And, and thank you for sharing more or less how this idea came to life. But before we, we get into there, um, the part of, of them being solar powered actually seems like a little futuristic, especially for the time, right? Uh, especially for, you know, efficiency, for conversion of, of electricity into this. So how did you first sort of combine these two technologies together with the respective limitations, solar power and, and you know, uh, uh, electric vehicles for, for the ocean? How did you learn and, and, and combine these two in the first place? Look, um, I always say um, our boats are not a perpetuum mobile. If you know this, this term is a machine that uh, once initiated runs forever. That's not the point. We, we need to, we need to um, get along with the energy that we get from the sun. Uh, in fact, yes, we have a generator. We can add, uh, start a generator at any time that refills our batteries, just to be on the safe side. But the challenge, the goal is not to start the generator. And of course, there are some restrictions, some limitations. But on the other hand, what about a sailing boat? Uh, a sailing boat has a lot of limitations because if there is no wind or the wind is not coming from the right direction or in the right force, uh, then you end up as a motorboat. That means motorboat with a mast, yeah? Right. <laughs> motorboat with mast, yeah? And um, actually, this is probably not the, not the type of boat or not the reason why the people choose a sailing boat uh, to end up at a, as, as, a, as a motorboat. Uh, but in, uh, what I want to express is a uh, sailing boat has way more restrictions than any solar boat uh, for the very simple reason with a sail, you can only move the boat. And only right. when the wind is coming from the right direction, the right force. You cannot cook spaghetti with a sail. Um, and you cannot generate the power to cool down your beer or you cool, to cool down the, the, uh, the cabin or the salon. That's simply not foreseen in the concept of a sail. Yeah? And the sail is only... Uh, um, supplying power yeah? um, when you use it for propulsion if you're at anchor sounds absurd I know but it's, that's, that's the fact if you're at anchor in a bay the sail does not supply any power obviously of course solar panels do and that's the main difference because the solar panel Pro, um, provides power while we are cruising as well as while we are at anchor. And you won't believe it. Uh, the idea for this whole story came when I was at anchor in the in a bay on the island of Myro in the Caribbean. I was up on the mast uh, exchanging the bulk of the, of the anchor light mm -hmm. and I looked down to the deck and I saw, I saw the solar panels on the back. I saw the wind generator who was not really turning because we were in the protected bay. The solar panels were working because the sun was shining. Uh, and the sail, uh, the sail, the main sail was in the lazy bag and the zip was closed. And, uh, and, um, and the jib was rolled up 
uh, and both sales were not working. Obviously, we were at anchor, but the, the, the solar panel was working. And at that moment, I said, what a stupid idea. Can it be to mount a mast on top of a boat with sails that 98, maybe 99% of the time are not working? and not producing any energy. And the energy, even if you want to use it, can only be used to move the boat for nothing else. Whereas the solar panels produce power 100% of the time, of course, not in the night, yeah? But of course, uh, during the daytime, they produce power and you can use the power for the propulsion of the boat as well as all, for all hotel uh, supplies. That means everything what you run in the boat from lamps, um, galley, oven, stove, right. uh, top, fridge, aircon, whatever. Yeah, And you can store the power in the batteries. That means when the wind stops, the sailing boat stops in exactly the same moment. When the sun stops, no problem, because the energy that we, that we get from the sun can be stored in the battery. Right. Uh, Nobody ever tried to store wind energy uh, coming uh, from the wind in a sail to store it somewhere. <laughs> it's not possible. You can store it with a wind generator as an electrical power in a, in a, in a battery. That works. The only problem with that is we tested it. And believe me, we tested even with four wind generators. And it doesn't mm -hmm. make sense for a very simple reason. Because... People, people told us so many times, hey, come on, uh, you have these wonderful solar panels on the roof, but why don't you use the wind as well? The wind is for free. The wind is also blowing during the night when there is no sun. Uh, why don't you use the wind? Very simple reason. Sailors usually do not search an anchorage uh, where it's really windy. They are searching for protected base. And protected means uh, no waves, no wind. That means uh, typically you're not at anchor or somewhere where there is a lot of wind 24-7. This is not the area you're looking out for if you're on the boat. And believe me, it's pretty annoying. If you're standing behind a reef in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. reef means protection from the waves, but no right. protection from the wind. Uh, believe me, you stay there for a few days and then you, you leave because it's pretty annoying to have 20, 25 knots of wind 24-7. Good for the wind generator, good to get some energy in. Uh, you can wash your dishes with the dishwasher and the washing machine is running day and night if you want. Uh, but at a certain point, you have nothing more to wash and, and the wind is still annoying and you in the end up at a protected bay. And that's the point. If you take the uh, harvest, not of, a day, of one day, if you take the harvest of a week, of a, of a, of a month uh, from the wind generator and compare it to what you get in, what you harvest with a solar panel, the result is very clear because the solar panel produces way more power, even though it works only for a couple of hours per day, and the wind generator theoretically could work 24-7, but it does not. Because while sailing, it does not really work, because it, 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 a wind generator requires a laminar uh, a flow of the, of the wind, which is not the case while the, while the boat is in right. waves, maybe even healing to, to one side. This is simply not the case. So it produces very little power while sailing. And in a bay, again, you rather search for a protected bay than for a windy bay. So that's the reason why we did what we did. No wind generator, no diesel engines uh, to propel the boat, but electric motors, and on the other hand, solar panels that produce the power that can be do used for everything, propulsion, uh, cooking spaghetti and cooling a beer. <laughs> I mean, I, I have to say that is the most well-rounded description of, of how this idea, an idea came to life of, of, of any product. It's, it's amazing. And I mean, I, I, I did see that you and your wife are both uh, sailors at heart for, for many, many years, way before you started Stalin right? Yeah. 
Um, but I do have a question. How did you actually uh, first, I mean, when you first began using and, and applying these solar panels into the boats, into these uh, yachts, into the sailors, etc., did you already have previous experience with solar panels? Did you already know how these worked in terms of, you know, the whole system, mounting them, etc.? Or did you have to learn it from scratch? And after learning it, did you have to modify it to apply to a boat? No, no, not at all. Um, actually, mid-90s, um, we, we mounted the first solar panels on our boat. They were not very efficient. They would have... Uh, one of the first generations, um, they were not lasting very long. However, right. we used them, they worked, they worked, yeah. And I'm, I'm very proud uh, to, to say that I'm, I'm, I was probably one of the very, very, very first people in the world that ever mounted um, an inverter on a boat. Because inverters making 220 or 110 in your case maybe uh, out of um, um, out of a 12 volt or 24 volt battery simply did not exist at that time. They were right. invented, of course. Uh, everybody knew how it is possible to get from 12 to 24 uh, to, to from 12 volt to 220 volt. Uh, but it was not common. If you wanted to have 220 volt, you had two uh, two possibilities. One was go to a marina <laughs> and plug in your boat uh, to shore power or start the generator. Uh, right. I, I wanted none of the, these uh, possibilities because if you, uh, if you have a boat, you want to stay outside. You don't want to go. To, I don't want to go to a marina. Uh, maybe some people want to go to show off uh, to a marina to show their boat. Uh, we wanted to stay in the bay. And uh, to run a generator just to recharge your mobile phone uh, is for sure not the smartest way to use energy. And um, uh, so, so I, I asked um, a guy in a, in a shop next to my home if he can build something for me. I didn't know what, uh, how to explain it to him, but I want to get... 12, from 12-volt 12 battery, I want to get to 20. Do we have something? I asked him. And he said, yes, yes, there is a, there is a, such a bricolage package, mm -hmm. <laughs> a bag with a lot of resistors and diodes and don't ask me, electronic mm -hmm. parts. And he said, um, I, can, I can build one for you uh, that is sufficient maybe to recharge your phone. I said, no, no, my friend, it's not the goal. This is, this is nice. But I want to run my fridge, and I also want to run a hair dryer, and I want to run my, my galley on that. Right. Uh, yeah, we ended up at, at 1500 watt, which was big at that time. Today, it's nothing. Yeah, Brilliant. but 1500 watt, it was a it was a small box, a black box with only a plug in the front and uh, two sockets in the in the back for the 12 volt battery, and that's it. This is what we installed mid mid 90s. And we had power uh, for a hairdryer, for the fridge, for whatever, household right. appliances coming out of the battery, uh, consumer battery that is, uh, was recharged by the, by the big diesel engine. Not very efficient, I know. Uh, and by some solar panels at that time. So it worked. It absolutely worked. And from 95 to about 2005, I developed this system, installed it in several boats, and 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 improved the system. In 2005, mm -hmm. I built the first demo boat. Um, no, sorry, not demo, a testing boat, right? Uh, which we crossed the Atlantic Ocean, uh, and used the boat for about four to five years in the Caribbean. And on this boat, I had this idea that I just explained on the mm -hmm. island of Mar that I thought uh, this is it, it can't be more stupid um, the next uh, if I, I go to the next uh, ferreteria to the next uh, hardware shop uh, buy a big a big metal saw and yeah. and cut the mast uh, and uh, and enlarge the, the roof that we already had wow. uh, and balance on the roof and then we have a nice boat I put out take out the diesel engines that anyway only caused uh, problems uh, put electric motors in and then the problem should be solved. I did not do that because I understood it doesn't make sense to um, um, to refit uh, an existing boat that is working with a completely different system mm -hmm. because it will never run efficiently. 
Um, if you want uh, to use such a disruptive technology, I think the only way to do it is by starting with a white sheet of paper and right. not to transform, uh, convert uh, an existing boat that has been actually originally been designed to work as a sailing boat mm -hmm. and to transform it to, to something completely different. This does not really work. Uh, so in the end, um, we decided to sell this boat and to buy, uh, to build actually, sorry, to build a new right. one, uh, to design it from scratch as a solar boat, which we did in the year 2009. Mm -hmm. And uh, from 2010 on, we sailed for three years without using the generator, not even one time. Wow. We did not use it. Okay, what was the result? The generator was gone uh, because <laughs> rusty, broken, ceased, yeah, just right. <laughs> gone, yeah. Uh, Fisher Panda, I want to mention this um, uh, because Fisher Panda was really kind. They said, even though you did not use the generator, you want you made wonderful marketing for us, so we give you a new... <laughs> 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 That's what happens when you build a good product, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, so in the end, uh, we, we ended up with a new generator and we understood that we had to use it. Uh, so we used it every every other week, more or less, for half an hour, but mm. not to recharge. We only started it when the batteries were full. So we can claim mm. now that we went for four years with uh, on about 100 charter weeks with guests without using the generator at all for charging. Wow. That yeah. is an impressive milestone. Yes. It's an yes. impressive milestone. It, worked. it was in total about 12,000 miles uh, that we sailed without using the generator. We had it and we were very happy to have it because it gave us safety, uh, security. We, were, uh, we felt safe mm -hmm. uh, because only the batteries. We would not have felt safe because if the weather is bad, to be honest, uh, if there is not enough sun, uh, it's not good. It's not good. Uh, if your batteries are at 20% and you maybe have to leave from this anchorage, it's not a good feeling. But if you know you have a generator, okay, what shall happen? I push the button, I start the generator, and I go out. Right, right. It's the worst case scenario, but you're already covered. Yes, right. yes. So it was not needed. It worked without. Now that's it, it's it's amazing. It really is amazing how you actually managed to to build this boat. You mentioned this is the first boat you built and that lasted for around four years, right? Yeah. Um, Two thousand. We sold it. That that's amazing. That's uh, that's actually pretty amazing. Now I have I have two questions over here, right? The first thing is when you're building your own boat that is aimed to be solar powered, completely electrical, etc. Do you have to consider the specific materials that you're going to be using for it? Um, or can you use any sort of uh, materials that are used in boats, maybe wood, maybe uh, metal, etc.? On the, on the first boat, electrically powered boat, which was our Solar Wave 46, which we built in 2009 and sold in 2013, um, we used, um, we used um, a fiberglass epoxy um, a composite which is which is a very good material not not the absolute lightest that you can get but very mm -hmm. light or only carbon epoxy would be a little bit lighter right. uh, so very good quality already and um, so of course you can use in fact any kind of material but weight is an issue uh, like on any catamaran catamarans are very sensitive to to, to weight uh, they should not be too heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, like on every boat, people always think uh, that weight does not matter on a boat. Uh, just if they, when they see a cargo ship with uh, mm. thousands of tons, right. think that weight does not matter. Of course, it matters. Otherwise, uh, it wouldn't make sense to build uh, to build the, the racing uh, boats catamarans or monohulls, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, to build them in, in, in really high-tech carbon technology and uh, to really save every every gram they can find. Uh, yeah. I always said uh, we, we, we break our, 
our toothbrush in two parts and only keep the front part uh, to save weight uh, when, before we go out on, on to sail. Uh, because again, really, you need to save weight wherever you can, because weight means performance or right. more weight performance. And, um, and for this reason, uh, the next generation of boats that we built uh, starting in the year 2015 uh, were in full carbon uh, epoxy. Mm. And uh, they were even lighter and very efficient as well. Very, very efficient. Um, we are now using a mixture of, of fiberglass and epox uh, fiberglass and carbon uh, because on some places uh, fiberglass still makes sense because you cannot really save weight with, with carbon on right. some places, especially on the hull. Uh, but all the rest is, is in carbon, just again to save weight. So weight definitely matters. Uh, we have all also aluminum boats, uh, but uh, if you do it in a smart way, also aluminum is pretty lightweight. Right. I mean, it, it, it is true that weight is the most important. Anybody who has ever gone on a, you know, on a little just boat, maybe to go scuba diving or, or just to go uh, glamping, it's, it's very clear that weight is so important. But now, yeah. over in selling yachts, there's an, a, another very important aspect that you really take into account. It's, it's actually in the name, right? Which is noise, or in this case, silence, right? Um, yes. How, how did that become an issue for you? And how did you actually solve it? And why are your yachts so silent now? Uh, um, just think about how uh, how does a sailor feel uh, if if someone has a sailing boat? He usually goes out of the marina under engine. He uses the diesel engine to get out of the bay, the marina, whatever, right. and all still uses the diesel engine uh, to set sails uh, because he has to drive against the wind and so on. Uh, or he uses the diesel engine if there is simply no wind. And believe me, uh, I, may I ask you, did you ever sail? I have sailed, yes. Yeah, okay. So um, you know probably the feeling when you go for, for a couple of hours uh, using the diesel engine. It's annoying, yeah, because you have the you have the noise, you have the fumes, especially when the wind is coming from the back, you have the right. fumes in the cockpit. It's really annoying. And the best moment on a sailing boat is when you stop the diesel engine, when you turn it off, and you have set your sails, and you, you, you continue from this moment on in a silent way. Right. You're using the sails. And this is the best moment on a, on a sailing boat, when stopping the diesel and continuing under sails. And this is the point. The, the people who, who do sailing uh, don't do it uh, to run the diesel. They want to go silently, use the power of nature, uh, use the wind, uh, and not the diesel. And, uh, and this, is, this is the point also for us. Um, we, our boats are always silent. And that's where the name is coming from, uh, because they don't make noise. The electric motors do not make any noise it's really mm -hmm. really like an electric car it's it's smooth yeah. it's very smooth very and they are they're they're in, in the in the hull deep in the hull and you you absolutely do not hear them and so uh the the the, the point is to do of was the point has been for us to develop a boat that can give you the comfort of a motor yacht, mm -hmm. that means always uh, power available, 24-7 ample power available. And on the other hand, um, also the comfort, uh, and this is a big comfort, of silence, the silence of a sailing boat. Right. And this is the combination we were aiming for, to have luxury and comfort um, actually almost without any limits because the battery bank is so huge. You cannot deplete it in the night. It's simply impossible on our boats to right. deplete it in the night. You are not completely stupid. Uh, completely stupid means aircon air con full power and, uh, and all doors open. But still, even that <laughs> is not sufficient to, to empty a battery during right. one night. Right. Um, but um, to have all 
comfort that is common on modern motor yachts, but only when running a generator 24 seven. And we wanted to achieve this without the generator running. And this is possible if you have a big battery bank right. and on the other hand, a really, really optimized solar array. Because for example, put uh, like um, one brand does it to have the solar panels on the sides of the hull. Uh, let's say good marketing, good marketing, uh, but not very that efficient. efficient. That is Just true. Not sense. Uh, because it, w when you are in a marina or at anchor, it doesn't produce any power because usually you have your fenders on your side or maybe a neighbor next to you. Uh, it doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, if you mast uh, and, the, and the boom on top, uh, also the panels on the roof, uh, do not really produce power mm -hmm. because the for a solar panel is not shade. The worst is <laughs> to be partly shaded. Partly shaded is yes. the problem. That means a whole. If you, if the uh, if the sky is overcast, you still produce a lot of power. But in bright sun, if you have the shade of only a mast or a boom or something mm -hmm. that. Uh, that shades only a tiny portion of, of uh, a solar panel, mm -hmm. this solar panel does not produce any power anymore. And don't believe the storytellers that tell you, nah, our panels are the best ones because they have these <laughs> diodes, you know, diodes. Yeah, we have diodes. Right. So if one cell or one string is shaded, all the others still produce. Yes, they are right. But you cannot use this power. Uh, because if the panel next to it uh, is not shaded, uh, the weakest link of a chain uh, counts. Yeah, we say right. in German. I hope this makes sense uh, in your language. Yes, yes. That means if one panel breaks down, the other one which is connected to them, and if it's five of them connected to them, all, all other break down as well. And and if you have uh, instead of instead of uh, sixty um, sixty volt, only only thirty volt coming mm -hmm. out from a panel. You cannot charge a 24 volt battery because to recharge a 24 volt battery, you need more than 30 volts. Right. So, and if you don't have more than 30 volts, uh, you still have power, but you can't do anything. You cannot recharge your batteries. So, that's the main problem. Uh, or you need to use very elaborated and, and high tech um, charging infrastructure uh, to, to get up, to, to, to transform the voltage up to that level that you want to achieve, which is really complicated. And, right. and in fact, it makes sense. So there is a very simple solution instead of being complicated. The simple solution is put your panels on the roof and, and design the roof in a way that there is no shade on the roof. Yes. Period. That's it. This is what we did. So instead of having panels on the side or on small surfaces mm -hmm. that are in, in, in different angles to the sun, which is the next problem, by the way, yes. uh, and requires a very, very elaborated and high-tech and complicated uh, charging infrastructure, which they don't have, by the way. Uh, it is much easier, much simpler to, to go the conventional way, the simple way, make a big roof, uh, design the roof first and then the boat below, what we did. Uh, we did not design the boat and then try to fit a roof on top. We designed the roof and fit the boat below mm -hmm. and uh, maximize the roof and maximize the solar array wow. and do it in a way that you have no shade on the panels and you will succeed because you have a lot of power coming in that you can store in the batteries and you can use it 24 seven to supply all household appliances and the electric motors. It's, it's honestly amazing how you, you're not just an expert on boats. You're an expert on solar panels, and I believe you're the only solar expert or one of the few that can be an expert on solar panel powered boats. So it's, it's actually pretty cool. Um, I want to move now more into the manufacturing side of, of, your, of your projects, right? On more, on more on how you built this, right? Because you already mentioned that back in 95, you, you sort of did as, a, as an own project, you know, uh, adding these solar panels, cutting down the, the mash tile, and yes. then... Uh, you, you're just cutting it out, chopping it like a tree, and then um, building the own boat uh, on 2009, running it from 2009 to anything, right? 
No, we're ten years later after you sold the first very boat, and you have on your you know on your product markets, a marketplace. You have the side for selling yaks only. You also have hybrid, but for selling yaks only, you have the silent uh, 60, 80, and one twenty. Yes. The very first question that I have is how many iterations did it take to go from these very rudimentary, if you will, rudimentary to the extent of it can be the word can be used in the in the nineties. These are uh, very, very heavily installed uh, solar panels into these very, very nice looking and very efficient yaks that you have right now. How long did that R and D go for? Actually, the R and D went from 1995 until today, and it will continue. Obviously, <laughs> uh, it was not a, a certain amount of iterations; it was simply a process. Right. Uh, none of us counted the changes that we made, uh, and we we did not, to be honest, we did not earn money so far for the simple <laughs> reason um, because yeah, it's, it's easy uh, because um, because I uh, and, and that's that's how I am. Uh, I insist on 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 building a, a perfect product, and uh, if, if, when I see that that um, a boat is is not is not. Um, uh, in accordance to my to my uh, to my needs to my to my I don't know to my how to express it uh, to to what I want to achieve yeah mm -hmm. to what I uh, ideally would like to 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 get what is my goal um, uh, then I simply change it I don't deliver it I change mm -hmm. it. And um, and um, my clients so far appreciated it because they they understood that I'm a perfectionist and I don't deliver something that is not perfect, and uh, that's why we 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 changed hull forms, hull molds, uh, hull shapes, and, uh, and therefore also the mold uh, many times just to optimize the boat. Uh, we changed the roof, uh, finished uh, roof molds because we found out uh, we can optimize it a little bit, uh, and and um, so we changed the mold again. And this is this is for sure not the right way to make money, but it's right. definitely the right way to bring a company forward and um, to show a client that we are really, really, um, um, what's the term? Um, dedicated uh, to what we are doing we are we are uh, we, we don't want to deliver the second best product we want right. only to the very best one and uh, and this is um, and this is yeah this is our mentality and that's that's may, maybe also also the reason why why we were the first one and while we are still the the leader in the market uh, even though there are few very few less than a handful of 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 companies now coming up that uh, at least claim to want to produce some boats in the future. Yeah. <laughs> because whenever you read about solar boats, it's, it's um, usually with wishful thinking. There is only one right. brand on the market apart from us that ever put a boat into the water with electric motors and solar panels and that, that could work. Right. Uh, but I think uh, I think it's a big difference because this this competitor is more than double uh, the weight of of our boats. Uh, uh, but wow. yeah, but on the other hand, uh, it, they produce on less than half, maybe one third uh, of the of the of the power that we generate on the same day in the same bay. Right. And, and this is a big difference because our boats are really autonomous, and I'm very very proud that we that we got to that level. And it 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 uh, it also of course comes with, um, as I mentioned already in the beginning, with uh, starting with a white uh, sheet of paper, yes. because those brands that think that um, that um, they can simply take a take a conventionally powered boat that they designed to be a power boat or a sailing boat and put some solar panels on it and put some electric motors in. Right. Uh, they, yeah, they can never be that efficient as if you design a boat for exactly that purpose. Yes, and I mean that is something that I that I very much understand because 
the very fact that you mentioned that you first design the roof and then and then well, design the <laughs> right you build it and then design the whole boat below it it i, I mean it makes the whole the whole the, a huge difference and following yes. this this same path that you that you design it with this in mind I, I have to understand that manufacturing is the same thing. You manufacture it with, with, with it in mind being fully autonomous. So the, my question is, what steps and innovations do you, do you take to make sure that the final boat is low maintenance so that it's not going to you know, be a very hard uh, ship, not only to sail and to maneuver and to deal with, but in the long run to maintain? Um, very simple. Um, my wife and I gave uh, a lot of lectures uh, during during our time that we spent on conventionally powered boats. Yeah, so we worked also right. as a photographer. Um, I'm I'm lawyer, my original profession, but I I I, I worked in my in my uh, profession only for two and a half years because <laughs> I, that's not me. Uh, your your but, passion, yeah. Yes, uh, my passion was, was always boats and was always to optimize boats. This was my passion from, from childhood on. And um, so, sorry, back to the question. What was the question? Yes. What, <laughs> what steps do you take during manufacturing to ensure that the boats are low maintenance in the long run? Thank you. Thank you. So we gave many lectures uh, during, during many years while we were living on boats in the Caribbean and in other areas of the world. Uh -huh. um, we were doing charter business and worked as photographers and everything. We, we tried to, uh, yeah, to, to survive somehow. And, um, and um, we found out that it's always the same guys uh, that cause trouble. And the guys were the, the two guys in the back under the beds, uh, the, the diesel engines, and uh, and the rig, the complete rig, uh, means mast, boom, sails, uh, shrouds, uh, stays, uh, and uh, all the running gear, uh, winches, whatever you have on a boat to to sail, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this was causing problems, always, always. It's not causing problems on a brand new boat if you don't use it, uh, but if you use a boat, if you cross an, uh, oceans and if you use the sails every single day, uh, you will see how many things you have to exchange and uh, to maintain on a very, very regular basis. It means yeah. uh, one, two, three hours every day maintenance works. And it was always the same things uh, that required maintenance. And we, uh, we aimed at uh, eliminating those components that caused trouble. Right. Rather, rather than redesigning them, you, you chose to get rid of them in the first place. Because there is already a solution. Um, um, there is one big difference between a technician and, and uh, in my case, a lawyer. Um, uh, a technician would substitute a not working uh, technical solution with another um, even more complicated technical solution, which avoids in a technical way the problem that the first one caused. Right. Yeah? As I'm not a technician, I could not do that because I did not have the knowledge for that. Right. Yeah. So of course, I have in the meantime a pretty deep uh, uh, technical understanding, as you can imagine, sure. because I'm not doing anything else my whole life than solving <laughs> problems. Um, but uh, I'm I'm missing um, the uh, profound, uh, deep technical education. So I always tried uh, to solve uh, technical problems in a way that makes it more simple. Uh, and instead of having a diesel engine with hundreds of rotating and moving parts, yeah, mm -hmm. with valves and many things that are uh, moving and turning around and, and pivoting right. and I don't know. Uh, <laughs> like a car engine. Yeah, like a car engine. Yeah, exactly. This is a, is a, is a nightmare. You, you have thousands of parts of components did you ever did you ever moving parts an electric motor has um one wow. one and it's called the rotor <laughs> and the that's name true. because it's the it's rotating and that's the rotor and the stator the outside part usually not always yeah, but yeah. usually 
part, um, is not moving. It's full of, of, um, of um, what's the name, uh, the copper wire uh, windings uh, and, and magnets, and that's it. Not more. And the only rotating part is the rotor, and you have two bearings, and that's it. Nothing else. And, and by the way, an electric motor has less electronics than a modern diesel engine. A diesel engine has more black boxes than an electric motor. Of course, we wow. need an inverter on the, on the electric motor, yeah? which is a box, yeah. depending yeah. on the size of the motor, that uh, makes the motor understand how, how fast it has to turn. Yeah? Right. And, uh, and transform the power coming from the battery into the voltage and in, into the into the um, um, yeah, I don't know structure that that the that, 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 that the electric motor can work with, right. and but this is less complicated and uh, less electronics in fact than a, a modern not an old one but a modern diesel engine. Mm. And so this is a very, very, very simple, basic, uh, always functioning system. I'm very happy to, to, to grant lifelong warranty on our electric motors. Wow, that is, that is tremendous. Do you, know, do you know any car uh, conventional, yeah, conventional car manufacturer, boat manufacturer that Never will tell you long warranty on the Volvo or N MAN or Deutz or whatever, Never Caterpillar? Never engines heard of that. yeah <laughs> of course not because they have a very limited lifespan on our electric motors even, even though the manufacturer of the manufacturer of that motors does not grant me lifelong warranty they have a normal two year warranty but i'm absolutely sure that these motors in the way we use them in the boats will never ever die wow. never ever i have to say you are probably out of all of the guests that I've interviewed, you're probably one of the most passionate ones about your product. It's <laughs> it's incredible. Now, I, I also want to touch uh, in the differences, not only between the the Yak, the, you know, the Silence uh, 60, 80, 120. No, you have speed boats, tenders, yaks, yeah. electrics, hybrid. You have you have a lot of different device of different boats, right? You, you, it's not just a sailing boat, and that's it. Luxury, it's the speed. Is there a big difference between building and designing these electric vehicles, um, you know, from a yak to a speedboat? Is there a lot of difference in the design and production of these? Because, of course, the end use is going to be different. So, big difference. Way. Big difference, yeah. Um, look, the, the main difference is the, is the use of the boat. Mm -hmm. uh, the... A boat of 60 or 80 foot is designed to be autonomous for weeks and months to cross an ocean. Right. To, uh, to host six, eight, ten people for weeks or months uh, to supply all the people not only with uh, power for propulsion, but also for all kinds of uh, consumers on the boat. Uh, to stay in a bay for weeks uh, and to go long range. Uh, whereas uh, the, uh, a tender is designed uh, to go to shore, uh, to maybe go to the next or a second to next bay, and right. that's it, and come back. Um, uh, the speedboat uh, is designed to go um, further, further than a tender, uh, maybe to the next island uh, and back at higher speeds. Uh, to have a, have a, a fridge running for two bottles of champagne uh, and, okay. a, and a bottle of whiskey or rum and some Cokes, uh, and that's it. Yeah. So it's a completely different use case compared, uh, compared to, to the yachts, uh, because on the yacht you live, on the other one you go out for swimming uh, or to show off or to, to show your neighbors uh, your new girlfriend, uh, and that's the that's the purpose of, of the speedboat. Yeah, to be to be very very honest, and and also the tender is is uh, is designed to bring six eight or more people from the boat to the shore, uh, either for snorkeling or for diving, for mm -hmm. sitting on the beach or for going to a restaurant. Hopefully with a with a dry bum, uh, not like on the on most of the tenders that. You, uh, on which you arrive wet when you get to the restaurant. 
so this was our goal to get the people to the beach dry and not wet and <laughs> so that's the purpose of these boats and it's completely different to the uh, to the big boats that we built right and especially the biggest one the 120 is an explorer that means this oh. boat is designed to go to alaska to to stay there for wow. for months so it's completely different this is an explorer vessel it's not a boat mm. anymore uh this is this is huge this is a big boat um the 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 upper deck where you you have your anchor winch and your sofas and and uh, uh, and the and the helm is mm-hmm. five meters fifty above the water line. Can you imagine five meter fifty? Wow, I mean yeah. that's a, that's a huge tall boat. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the deck boat. is five meter fifty above the the water line. Yeah? Right, 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 right. Just above that. So the bow, in fact, this is where the bow ends. The bow ends on the the, the top end of the bow is at five meter fifty. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a it's a very specific use case. The one for the selling uh, for the one twenty series, right? Uh, the fact that it's an explorer vessel, as you mentioned, it's. I mean, I see yeah. this a very very specific use. Is this? I mean, is this a boat that is very demanded in the market, or I mean, versus, for example, a more a more general uh, like a seven sixty or a seven eighty? Is this very demanded, or is this a very specific use case that you build sort of? on request rather than on production now actually all boats we build on request uh, mm-hmm. but it's of course as, as uh, a smaller series uh, than uh, than on a, on a silent 60 so we right. we we built our first 120 now since about almost one year uh and already looks like a boat let's say that from from the outside it's it's almost complete from inside not Oh, so it okay, will take at least one uh, one more year, yeah. uh, but but this boat um, uh, we we have we have some more clients that are uh, that are considering to order a boat. So, uh, but of course, uh, the price is different. So there is less people on the market that can afford uh, buying such a boat. We are talking about right. uh, almost thirty million. And this is a this is a big number. So that's I think the main reason is not is not uh, is not the the mere size of the boat. Uh, it's more uh, can some how many people can afford uh, buying such a boat and that needed and, right? Sorry. And and how many people really need it? Um, I'm 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 now fine uh, talking against my own business, but actually nobody needs. <laughs> Um, yeah, because it's 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 a toy. Yeah, it's it's a yeah. it's a big toy, big toy for for big children, uh, and it's uh, I love this boat. So don't get me wrong. It's a, it's an unbelievable boat. It's uh, it's it great, um, but it's a it's a pleasure craft. Yeah. So it's it's uh, for for people that say, okay, um, I want to do it. Mm-hmm. I simply want to have a boat that is able, without refueling, to go around the world, uh, to be uh, to be in base uh, for for weeks, and to be absolutely uh, self sufficient and independent, autonomous. And this absolutely. is this is uh, this is the right boat for for such people. And it's a gorgeous boat. It's 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 unbelievable. I mean, that is true. I have seen I've seen pictures. It's it not offers a helipad, uh, and I'm sure I'm sure when we at least uh, when we build the next one, uh, the the owner will supply it uh, with a with an electric um, EV toll uh, with a electrical vertical um, landing takeoff and landing. Take landing yeah. And uh, I think this uh, this is the the right the right toy for this boat, and that's what we build it for. I, I really, I really like how 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 you make this differentiation, right, between needing and just wanting. It's it's yeah. very cool. Now, another time is running out. So <laughs> I, I agree with you. I agree with that. I agree with totally. Now we're in a long time, so I just have two final questions, right, before yeah. before before we close this out. The number one question is: I'm very curious what you think of where this is going. You know, I, as you already mentioned, there are essentially only two companies out there you and and one more competitor that is that is maybe some strides uh, be- below you uh, that are really putting electric vehicles and electric yaks in the market right 
So it's a it's a it's not just a niche market. It's straight up a new one. It's a new industry. Where do you see it going? Maybe use cases for military, for exploration, for cargo transporting, etc. Where do you see this industry headed to? I think, um, yeah, Martin Luther King. Uh, I have a dream. Um, <laughs> I, I have a dream that, um, that um, in a few years um, it will be very, very common to drive with an electric car uh, to a marina and to step on an electric boat. And I have the dream that um, the fuel-based boats will uh, phase out, they will gradually disappear uh, there will remain some some dinosaurs. Yeah, I have, by the way, an, a dinosaur in my garage, a Ford Model A, uh, ninety three years old. Yeah. Wow. Of course, a fuel engine. Yeah, obviously. Naturally, <laughs> uh, yeah. This is this is okay for me if there are some remaining. But I think the people will understand that uh, not only the modern, the smart way, the smart way to get from A to B. No matter with a car or with a boat, and in the future, maybe, hopefully, also with a plane, uh, that the smart way to get from A to B is electric. Because not only it works, um, it, it, has, uh, it causes less pollution, uh, it causes way less maintenance, it's way cheaper than any other way, and it also requires less resources. Because even if we need at the moment still some rare earth for the for the for the batteries and yes. some minerals that are not so common and expensive, this will change in a few years because they already uh, developed batteries that um, that are that need less. And by the way, um, please don't tell me that uh, a diesel engine is is growing on a tree. Uh, there are also um, many things in the diesel engine that need to be produced by someone. They need to come right. from somewhere uh, and um, that require people to get it, to dig it out from the, from the earth and from the mm -hmm. soil to, to put it into a diesel engine. And uh, in any case, a diesel engine for the, for the whole lifespan uh, consumes a lot of fuel that also does not grow on trees and that causes... Right. And in the end, the overall, the overall, uh, um, oh, what's the word? Um, um, environmental balance. Uh, what, what is the right. better word? Uh, the sustainability. The sustainability uh, is 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 way more favorable for our planet if you use electric propulsion than any kind of even the most modern way of e-fuels and whatsoever, because the e-fuels uh, consume a lot of energy, more energy than you have in the e-fuel. Uh, same with hydrogen. Hydrogen causes a lot of pollution. It's simply not true that hydrogen is green. It's not green. If they would produce it in a green way, and it would happen next to your house, then it would be okay. But to produce hydrogen in the Sahara desert and to transport it to Europe is not green anymore. I, and I this agree. is the main problem with all these alternatives. They are not really green. But to produce on site where you are, on your boat, the power and to put it in the batteries that are right under the solar panels and then put it into the electric motors, this is green. And this is a way that we use energy in the most efficient way uh, without polluting the planet. Right. I, I totally agree with you on that, that although manu the manufacturing side of, of, of the current uh, clean energy, it needs to catch up with actually being a little cleaner, right? For example, solar panel, solar panel manufacturing, as you already mentioned, hydrogen, etc. It's not as green. It's definitely better than fuel. But I agree with you that they, the manufacturing industry still has to catch up with that. I agree. Yeah. Now, I do have one final question for you, uh, which I believe yeah. is actually going to be very insightful, if you ask me, because it's, an, it's about an advice, right? But I don't want to just ask you what advice do you have for any people out there. I don't want to ask you that because you already gave us one very, very important piece, which is that every good idea and every project starts with a blank sheet of paper. 
right? Yeah. And I believe that is a wonderful, wonderful uh, thing to, to really embrace. But my question to you is, you as yourself are a, a sort of an engineer by heart, right? Maybe not by career. And you, you're creative and you're, innovate, and you're an innovator. What advice do you have for any person out there who is starting their own path, or maybe they, they also have the same profile as you do, that they like building stuff, creating stuff, that they maybe want to do the jump into actually being an entrepreneur, creating their own company. What advice do you have for those? <laughs> um, whenever you fall down, get up again and continue. That is very, very nice. Very straight to the point. I really appreciate that. And I believe that is the perfect way to give a closure to this episode, Michael. It has been a great pleasure talking about all of this because I think it is, it is one, of, one of the interviews that really embodies perfectly the fact that we're called Builder Nation, right? Because you build a lot of stuff just because you like it, just because you want to. So, Michael, thank you very much for, for being here, for sharing us you're sharing with us all of these projects and insights and, and, and your mind, where can we find you? And where can we find Selling Jacks on social media and the website? Uh, just type in silent-yachts.com. Uh, you will find us on, on all kinds of social media, Facebook, uh, Twitter, whatsoever. And uh, especially our website, uh, I think, is the, gives the best insight of, of our products. And um, yeah, just visit us, um, have a look what, what we offer. And um, in the best case, you're welcome to, to join the silent family. I mean, I have to say your website is amazing. I really, really spent quite my time just navigating through your website, looking at the boats you build, looking at the yaks. It's honestly amazing. Um, also, do, if you want to share this, do you have any, any upcoming events? or any upcoming uh, interviews that you would like to share? Uh, actually, we, yeah, the next big boat fair for us is the Dusseldorf Boat Show in Germany. And um, then Palma Boat Show on the island of Mallorca. Uh, we are on the, on the big American boat shows um, in uh, Miami uh, and Fort, um, uh, Fort Lauderdale and probably also in West Palm Beach. And we... And we are, of course, of course, every year at the Cannes Boat Show. Uh, that's the big, biggest events that, that, yes. that, we, uh, that we participate in. And uh, most of all, you're very welcome to visit us at, uh, at our production facility in Fano, Italy, or on the island of Mallorca, where we have some boats uh, for testing, for sea trials, and uh, to, get an, to get an idea what it means uh, wow. to, leave, to leave a marina without any noise. Believe me, the people were sometimes almost, almost uh, frightened uh, because <laughs> they thought we were drifting away. We are not fixed anymore. The boat is not, is not moored anymore. And they were really scared. <gasps> we're drifting, we're drifting. No, no, no. We're going out. We're simply going out. You can't hear the engines. We are, we are going out now. <laughs> I, 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 I want to go to Mallorca now and try it out. Oh, my God. <laughs> Because believe me, these these are for me for me the most exciting moments when I see that the people are uh, almost almost frightened because they cannot believe that <laughs> something of that size can move without making any vibration, no noises, no fumes, nothing. Wow. It accelerates in a really really exciting way, like a Tesla. Yeah. So the acceleration on a on a silent yacht is outstanding really wow, outstanding. I, <laughs> I, I genuinely want to try this out uh, at some yeah. point so thank you very <laughs> very much for sharing that i i really have something to strive towards so yeah. thank you thank you very much now to everybody out there please remember that you can find more information interesting articles interviews shorts short content etc directly on our website and social media buildernation.io on the website buildernation everywhere across social media, TikTok, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter. We're going to love to hear from you. Thanks again for being part of this community. We're going to see you in the next episode. And Michael, again, thank you very, very much for joining us. This was an honestly incredible interview. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.
When building the future is your priority, tedious procurement processes should be last on your list. The problem is that purchasing data is scattered across spreadsheets, receipts, emails, and messages. Tracking it all sucks and makes it easy to commit mistakes. Introducing the Control Hub Way, the all-in-one purchasing software for hardware companies. Buying parts, services, or office supplies? Submit a quick purchase request to buy from your list of approved vendors or buy from a new provider. Buying from approved vendors is even easier. Import your shopping cart directly into your purchase request using our checkout integrations. When the order is ready, submit it for approval. We'll ping all pre-designated approvers both via Control Hub's website, email, and Slack notifications for a faster turnaround. If you need a PO, we got you. Generate it in one click. Online purchase? Boom! Virtual card. Do an automatic three-way match, pay invoices, and sync everything live with QuickBooks or NetSuite. Purchasing just got a lot easier. Control Hub. Get back to building.